Black Lover, welcome to the live broadcast on our once a month broadcast on my channel. Uh, welcome if you're new here, uh, make sure to uh, subscribe now um, and also hit the bell icon as well to uh, get notified as soon as I post my next video or also uh, as soon as I go live like uh, today. I'm just sharing uh, our live session in different groups. Um, I'm gonna invite some people to come and join uh, me today, if possible. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please make sure to uh, leave those questions in the, in the chat area and I'll answer them uh, right away. So uh, I have also some questions some, from some of my uh, viewers that have asked me some questions and I'm going to try to answer them as well. Uh, so welcome. Uh, my name is Saro. If you don't know me and if you're new here, uh, my name is Saro. I'm a dog trainer. I also coach dog owners. In my channel, what I do is I um, try to educate dog owners to become educated dog lovers. I help you to become educated dog lovers uh, by educating you, empowering you with information and the knowledge that is fresh, it's new, uh, and it's uh, up to date. And it's different also because in my channel, on my channel, we don't use uh, food or treats to train dogs. We don't use tools, versive tools like shock collars, prong collars, um, choke chain collars, anything, any of those tools as well. We don't use force, domination, or any kind of being alpha to our dogs. We we don't need to use them. The only uh, tool that or whatever what we use is play and praise. I'm going to explain that a little bit tonight as well. Make sure to ask your questions uh, if you have any questions and I'll answer them live right away. So one of the questions that is very common that I get and this is something that um, you know dog owners are having problem with it and they're not happy and they're not getting results out of it. Um, I'm gonna answer that question first, which is, is, is puppy classes, puppy group classes, beneficial for puppies or not? Is it good for dogs or not? Many dog owners, uh, you know, when they get a dog, they go and uh, register or attend a group class and they go and, uh, you know, start training their puppy hoping to get some benefits from that uh, class. But the problem with puppy classes is uh, there are a few problems. One of them is focus or concentration. When you attend a group class, any group class, especially if you're attending puppy class, it's most distracting class as, <laughs> as it can be because there are cute puppies all over the place and you are uh, distracted with puppies and also puppies are distracted with puppies and people and everything that is going on uh, so it's not a good environment to train dogs or be trained in general so I don't really suggest puppy classes uh, in group form what I usually suggest to do is check out my YouTube channel my playlist for uh, puppy training start there inform yourself with information and then attend or hire uh, a private trainer to start training you and educate you once you have some basics built some foundation built then you can start thinking about attending a group class it uh, doesn't have to be puppy class but it could be a class uh, designated or designed or selected for young dogs can attend that class but if you have just uh, got your dog or you are a new dog owner first time dog owner puppy class is not recommended it just too much for you you go to a class and you attend classes and basically you get nothing out of it 
uh, just a waste of money. You get nothing because the instructor talks and says things and teaches you th things, but because distracted with puppies, uh, you are not getting enough or benefit from that class. So we have uh, Karen Sharma uh, on our uh, on our live uh, show today, and I'm assuming Karen is asking. Yes, Karen is asking. Uh, my four-month-old boxer dog doesn't bark to other dogs. What uh, can I do about that? Uh, well, you're a lucky person that your dog doesn't bark at other dogs. It's a good thing, you know. Barking, it's not something that uh, many dog owners like it anyways. It's, it's become annoying. And barking in general, it's a, it's a sign of stress for dogs. So I don't really recommend letting dogs to bark and get, getting, dog to, getting dogs to bark in general. Barking uh, is a sign of stress. It's a sign of uh, anxiety. Uh, it's not good for dogs to bark because when they're barking, there are a few reasons why dogs bark. They're either excited or they're stressed. Uh, excited, you know, because they're either playing or they saw, no, saw, saw something that it got them excited, which is not good state of mind. Excitement, in a way, is not a healthy state of mind to be most of the time for dogs. Or, and if they're stressed or anxious or uh, scared or they're warning you, again, that's not a good state of mind to be. So barking in general is not a good um, good state of mind to be when a dog is barking. So I don't recommend to encourage a dog to bark. Um, it's, if, if it's four months old, it's good. You want to keep that your puppy, uh, your boxer, the way it is. Don't let it bark. Don't let it get to that. Um, get used to barking. Uh, it's not healthy. It's not beneficial. I don't really recommend to allow uh, a puppy, especially a puppy, to start learning to bark. Um, maybe it may be. You know, for some people, it may uh, seem. Um, cute and funny, but in general, uh, after a while, it becomes annoying. I, I don't recommend it. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Sangeeta is in the house. Hello, Sangeeta. Nice to see you. Uh, how, how are things going? Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I have a new addition, French Bulldog Puppy. Wow, congratulations. Uh, how old is it? Uh, how old is the, the dog, uh, the puppy? Um, so it's a female puppy, French bulldogs. Oh, we have few of them in our. Uh, uh, few, we have few of them in our play care. They are they are interesting breed. They are very fun, uh, yet very. They, we call them, you know, they play like a Frenchie. <laughs> Frenchies, they have a different attitude when it comes to play and doing things. Um, they're a little bit uh, too, um, I would say, uh, confident and they go for everything. So in a way, um, I like that attitude, but sometimes can be uh, troublesome for some dog owners who are new with this breed and they don't know this breed. You have to be really firm with, uh, with this uh, breed. Um, they are very sweet, yes, they are very adorable, yes. Um, so good, all right. So next question that I have is one of the questions that I, one, of, one of my uh, viewers has asked is, how to introduce a new dog to my aggressive dog? <laughs> how to introduce my, a new dog to my aggressive dog? This is a very interesting question. Um, I want to answer it so everybody learns and understands the concept. Um, when a dog, when you have an aggressive dog, it's not a good idea to bring another dog to your home. Uh, it's, I'm not against adopting and helping other dogs. It's just that I think when you have an aggressive dog, uh, it's better to fo direct your focus and your energy towards your aggressive dog before 
uh, you go and um, uh, help another dog. Help your dog. Help your aggressive dog. If you have a dog who's aggressive, that means uh, your dog is stressed. It's not enjoying life, right? So it's not happy. So you have to make your dogs pleasant, happy, uh, and then bring another dog to your life. So I highly recommend focus your energy towards helping your aggressive dog address that behavior, address that state of mind, uh, which, uh, you know, I have few videos that I have talked about how to deal with aggressive dogs. You can watch that, those videos. Uh, just go to my channel in the search bar on my channel, just um, type in aggressive and uh, I'll, I'll, it'll show up some videos about aggression that I have talked about. Um, watch those and address your dog who has aggressive behavior. Again, a dog who's aggressive, uh, it's not, uh, they're not happy, they're not uh, enjoying life. So it's your task, it's your duty to first focus on your aggressive dog and help make them feel better and health happier and more um, relaxed. And then once you do that, you can go and bring another dog to your life and uh, let them enjoy life together. Hope that answers your question. Now, uh, Sajida is asking, do dogs eat red meat? Uh, so it's, is it okay to feed dogs red meat? Yes, definitely it's okay to feed dogs red meat. Um, I usually suggest to feed dogs red meat. Um, you want to go somewhere, you want to do 50-50 maybe if possible, 50% red, red meat, 50% white meat. Um, or maybe 70% white meat and 30% red meat. Uh, try to uh, add some organs as well, a little bit of organs, uh, not too much in the diet as well. Uh, that will also consi be considered as a red meat. So yeah, just go ahead and add some red meat. It's okay to feed dogs red meat. Um, in my one of my upcoming videos, I'm gonna be um, showing you what I feed my dog and you can have an idea of what is possible to feed dogs and what is uh, what is basically the ratio and how it looks like how it feels like to feed a dog a raw diet so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna work on that and I'm gonna uh, show it uh, I'm gonna publish it in my channel um, let me go to Jay. Jay's in the house. Uh, Jay is asking, I want to put my puppy on a raw diet in the next few months. In the meantime, I'm feeding him wet food, uh, but the, he seems like he's always still hungry. My vet said maybe adding kibble to the wet food. What do you think? All right, so very good question. This is a good question as well. Um, usually, uh, again, most dogs in general, no matter what diet <laughs> you feed them, they always will look like uh, they're starving. It, it's just that's, that's how they are. Some dogs are very foodie, some dogs are medium, some dogs are not foodie as, at all. Uh, so what I mean by that is, for example, my own dog, Harvey, uh, He's a medium. He eats, as long as he eat, you, give, you give him something, he eats, he's happy. He's not asking for food all day. I had Jonah, he didn't care. If you didn't feed him, he wouldn't worry about it either. He wouldn't ask for it at all. He will ask when it's time for him to eat. He wouldn't ask. There are dogs who ask all day. <laughs> so just because they're asking, it doesn't mean that they're hungry. What you want to do is make sure that you're feeding enough food. The way you can figure this out, the basic formula that I have is very simple. You find out your dog's ideal weight. Let's say your dog's ideal, ideal weight of your dog is, your puppy is 20 pounds, right? Just I'm just using an example. 20 pounds if it's an ideal weight of your dog. 20 times 10, that's two, uh, uh, 200. So your puppy should eat 200 grams of food, okay? So if you have 30 pound dog, 300 grams of food. If 
you have 40 pound dog, 400 grams of food. So as long as you're feeding your dog, the amount that you figure out, let's say your dog is 20 pounds and you're feeding your dog 200 grams, as long as you're feeding your dog that amount of food, you should be um, comfortable about uh, and certain about that you're feeding good enough food, therefore your puppy is not starving. Now with puppies is something that you have to remember that uh, because they're growing up, you have to, about every 10 days, you have to add a, a pound or two uh, to your dog's diet, to your dog's amount of food. Because they're growing up, you have to kind of um, expand and ex uh, you know, add a little bit of more food to the puppies. But once they become adults and you have that ideal diet, ideal weight, then that's fine, you can stick with that ideal weight. But puppies is a little bit harder, so you just have to adjust it as you go. If you see your dog, if you're as long as you're feeding your dog the proper amount, and your dog's waist is, is okay, it's not too thin, and it's not too, if, if it's too thin, that means you need to add more uh, food or maybe more fat to the food. If you see that your dog is, dog is a bit chubby, what you want to do is you want to reduce the food uh, or reduce the fat a little bit uh, and then uh, adjust it. So if your puppy also is, uh, it's not because of the wet food or dry food or this and that, it's just in general puppies, they, uh, you know, they, to, they tend to uh, want to eat more. So what I usually suggest with puppies is uh, instead of feeding maybe twice a day or three times, maybe you want to feed three, four times a day up to about four to five months old. And then after that, you want to start feeding twice a day. Uh, you don't want to feed them too much again too often because as, uh, as you know, or you may know, not know, uh, mm, uh, every time you feed your dog, every time they eat, the they, it, spikes, it spikes insulin level, which causes health issues to develop. So you want to start feeding as often you can, but not too many uh, too often, and uh, reduce it to maximum two meals a day. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, Sigita is asking, my dog does not eat meat or raw food. Uh, I highly suggest feeding raw diet. Uh, I know many people are scared of this diet. Uh, they think it's, uh, it's something that, you know, it's going to kill the dogs and bacteria, this and that. I have done a series of videos about raw diet in my channel that you can go and watch it. Uh, let me see if I can link it to our chat line here. Um, there is, you don't, you shouldn't be worried about raw diet. It's not scary. I've, I'm feeding my dog. Raw diet is the best and healthiest diet that you can feed your dog. So go ahead and watch uh, the. I have just posted the link in the in the chat line. Um, it, it's a very good diet. Uh, if you start feeding your dog, if you understand the, the benefits of feeding raw diet, which we call it species appropriate diet, you will really, and your dog is going to benefit health-wise. There's no risk of uh, bacteria and salmonella as long as you're careful. In this video series that I've done, and I've just shared the link in the chat now, we go through all everything that you need to know. There's no worries. Everything that you need to know about feeding raw diet, it's there. Uh, if you still have questions, let me know. I'll answer those questions. I'm always available to answer questions. You can always ask me questions uh, using uh, the, 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 the comments area in my videos. I always read them. I always answer them. I'm always available to help you guys out. Oh, so try to figure out to feed a raw diet. Um, it's a good diet. Uh, Brittany Tolly is asking, how do you stop the puppy biting? So this is something that puppies are always, 
there are two reasons that dogs, uh, puppies bite. One of them is because uh, their gum is uh, their gums is uh, itchy uh, because they're teething, so their gums is a little bit sensitive, so they want to uh, kind of just get rid of that sensation of uh, itching. So it's, they start biting things. So what I usually so one of them is that. The other one, the other reason is just you know, puppies they that's how they play together. Dogs in general they bite each other when they play. So when a human is involved with a puppy, they treat you as a as a puppy, not a dog, and they bite you, thinking that it's okay. So for the first reason, if your puppy is biting, I highly suggest to invest in um, chew toys. You know those hard chew toys. And one of my viewers actually uh, uh, shared a, a tip as well. You can get your sock, and, you know, those unused sock, and tie it up a couple of times and make it nice and uh, tough a little bit and give them, let them chew and get over that sensation that they have in their mouth. Uh, that will stop them uh, from biting you. If they're biting you, one of the reasons that they're biting you is because you're interacting with them physically, you're playing with them. So toys that you can uh, hold on to, uh, just like the sock for example, or uh, rope toys or talk toys that you can play with your dog rather than allowing your dog to touch you and bite you and be involved with you. That's a good idea. The other suggestion that I have is allowing your puppy to play with other dogs or puppies as well. That will also help your dog to redirect that behavior towards other dogs and um, you know their own natural kind rather than humans. We don't want puppies to learn to bite humans. We don't want them to get used to it, and we don't. It's very uncomfortable for us. And and then once they get used to it. It's very hard to undo it. Uh, so I highly suggest you to focus on chew toys, rope toys, uh, play, if you're gonna play with your dog, uh, use rope toys, chew toys, let them chew, uh, you know, buy tw 10, 20 of them and just spread it out uh, throughout the house. Let them have a chew toy somewhere to play with and put it in their mouth and get rid of that sensation and allow your puppy to play with other puppies or dogs. I hope that answers your question. Dorothy is asking, my Shih Tzu dog is very picky when it comes to food. All right, uh, when dogs show pickiness, if they are picky, eh, there are a few reasons, again, well, that happens. One is because you may be feeding them kibble or dry food. Kibble and dry food are not uh, ideal and the best food for dogs. They don't feel good eating, uh, you know, kibble or dry food. Uh, one, because it's dry, it doesn't have a good feel. They don't feel good eating dry food. Two, it gets makes them thirsty. And three, it, uh, it just makes them feel bad. So if they're picky, it's not that they're picky, they're just fasting. They're fasting because they're not feeling good from eating uh, last night's kibble. So they're saying, oh my God, I have to eat this again. No, it makes me feel bad. I don't want to eat this. If your dog is on kibble, I bet your dog um, br uh, Dorothy, is your dog on kibble? I bet your dog is on kibble or dry food. If you change your dog's food to raw diet, you'll see they're not going to ask any question. They will gulp it, up, gulp it down. Uh, they will just vacuum it. You know, no questions asked. Uh, so that is the reason why they are picky. Uh, you're either feeding them uh, kibble or dry food, uh, or you're feeding them canned food, so they don't feel good when they're eating those kinds of food. It's not species appropriate. They don't feel good. They don't feel comfortable eating those and when they they are forced to eat because they're hungry they have to eat because you're not offering them anything else they have to eat that kibble or dry food so they eat it and then they don't feel good and they say no next time I'm not going to eat it 
thank you very much. Uh, but then they, again, they get hungry and they eat it. But I, that's a signal that your dog is not feeling good eating that food that you're offering. So I would highly suggest you to change the diet. Again, if you want to know what diet to feed, I highly suggest raw diet. And I have the link uh, in my of the video series that I've done about raw diet in the, in the chat line. You can go ahead and watch those videos, get informed, and know exactly what you're supposed to do. Jay saying, um, okay, sorry. Uh, I am with Linda. Linda Green. I have a fat first. Have a fast beagle mix. How do I keep him from eating sticks and stones and leaves when I take him out to walk or to go potty? Okay, so must be a puppy. I'm guessing it's a puppy, right? And it's a beagle. <laughs> so you have a beagle puppy. Dogs, when they go out, they experience life by um, you know, putting things in their mouth. Us humans, we touch things, you know, we, we feel things, we feel, okay, this is a pen, uh, it's sharp, it's scary, okay, I'm gonna put it away, right? That we learn that way. Dogs, puppies, beagles, they smell and taste. They smell things and then they put it in their mouth and then find out whether it was edible or not, which is kind of risky. But you want to let your dog to, you know, um, uh, to experience life. You know, let them put this stuff in their mouth. They will learn eventually. But if it becomes, I would worry only if it becomes obsession. If they're constantly putting things in their mouth, that would be obsession. I mean, what I mean by that, if it happens for a, more than a month or so, then it becomes obsession. With, for a month or so, you want to let them just experience that, let them do it, let them get things in their mouth. It's good for their, uh, you know, their, uh, not only, not only their experimenting and experiencing life, they're putting bacteria in their mouth, good bacteria, and they are the, uh, they're the, um, they're creating antibiotics in their body by putting stuff in their mouth, in their body. Believe it or not, it's a good thing. I would highly suggest you actually letting them to do that, unless it's a really scary thing that they're putting in their mouth, right? Uh, I mean, stones and leaves and things, you know, st sticks. These dogs love sticks, right? Uh, stones, you know, they put it in their mouth. Uh, if they're not swallowing it, uh, that's fine. If, if you can get it out of their mouth, let them experience it. Uh, leaves and stuff, it's fine, you know. And if you're gonna go for putty, let's say if you're gonna go for putty, you wanna make sure also, uh, there, here's another tip. If you're going for a putty, make sure that your dog is paying attention to you. You can take a toy or something to get your dog to pay attention to you and then uh, go, say, go putty, go pee pee, go do your business uh, and then bring him back so they don't have that opportunity to focus on other things. If they're paying attention to leaves and stones and things, that means they're bored. So you want to focus on uh, also um, providing more uh, an additional exercise and training mental and physical stimulation so they can focus on you rather than those stuff. I hope that answers your question. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, if I'm answering your questions, and if it's clear, let me know. If it's not clear, you have follow-up questions, please leave those questions in the chat area as well. Jay says, thanks, sir. I want you to know how much I appreciate what you do. The time and effort you put into the channel doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. That means a lot to me. And I love what I do. I love educating and helping dog owners. And that means a lot to me, uh, Jay. And I really, really appreciate that you noticed that. All right. Eerie Octopus uh, is ha asking, my small beagle is weirdly the opposite. She doesn't bite down hard on toys or like uh, like to play with toys very much. It is difficult to get her to play fetch or interact with a toy. Good, good point. 
there are two types of dogs. Dogs who like to play, dogs who love to be praised. There are no, there are no dogs who are motivated by food or not motivated by food. That's an old fashioned, old thinking. That's the way we used to think in 100 years ago. In this day and age, we have to change the way we look at dogs. It's a new era. We have learned so much about dogs. Although it doesn't seem like that we have learned much about dogs, but we have. We have learned that dogs are either motivated by play or praise or both of them. So your beagle, for example, um, Erie, is a beagle, is a dog who's motivated by praise. Not much play or toys, it's more motivated by praise. Like if you tell your, um, your beagle, uh, you tell her, good girl, what a girl, yes, good girl. I bet she enjoys that 100%. And I bet she will enjoy that more than food. So your beagle is a normal beagle, is a normal dog who's uh, motivated by praise. You focus on praising your beagle. Good girl, yes, yes, what a girl. Come on, here, girl, good girl, what a girl. All those verbal cues that you're giving and your excitement that you're sharing with your uh, beagle. I have some dogs over here. Um, if you're sharing those excitement, verbal, and energetic, enthusiastic uh, energy with your dog, with your girl, that's the best, actually. One of the best praises and rewards. So, you know, it's, it's okay, it's normal. Karen Sharma is saying, okay, sir, thanks, but a lot of street dogs try to show aggression to him, but my dog doesn't respond. What if he is not replying back? Is he scared from them? Hmm, okay, so if you're, you know, street dogs are street dogs. Street dogs are, again, remember, a dog who's barking is stressed or excited. So the street dogs are excited or stressed. So that's why they're barking. Your dog is saying, cool, chill out, man. Either it's saying that, it's saying, you know, calm down, buddy. Why are you so stressed? Relax. Why are you barking? Calm down. Or it's saying, oh my God, that dog is barking a hell out of it. And it's driving me crazy. I want to get out of here. Right? So your dog, it, it, just because it's not responding, it doesn't mean that it's, a, it's, not, <laughs> it's not normal. I actually believe, I think, and I, f I have the feeling that your dog is actually balanced, it's good, it's, it's okay, because it's not responding. If a dog is responding, that there's some stress in your dog if your dog is responding. I bet your dog is a chill dog and saying, oh, calm down, buddy. You don't need to get so stressed. So, no, he's not, uh, he's not uh, scared of them. He's actually the opposite. He's, <laughs> he's actually very cool. I hope that makes sense. Um, he's actually uh, trying to go towards them like he wants to play. And, and that is normal, too, you know, again. Um, so, as I said, you know, the barking is either excitement uh, because they're uh, excited about seeing something or you know, they want to play or things like that, or they're stressed and uh, anxious and angry. So, if your dog, if those dogs are barking, it uh, doesn't mean maybe they want to, may, maybe they want to play. So, you have to kind of be careful there. You have to understand if the other dogs are trying to play or they want to attack your dog. So that's something that you have to kind of figure out. Um, unfortunately, it's hard for me to say. You have to learn uh, body language of dogs and see if they're um, excited. Um, if here's a cue, uh, clue. If you're if the other dogs are, ro you know, kind of bending down and wagging tail, <laughs> that's a sign, and barking, whoa, 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 doing that, that's a sign that they want to play. But if they're standing up straight and saying, whoa, 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 that means they're, they're saying, back off, buddy, don't come near me. So just check the body language of the other dog and make sure that, you know, 
they're, they're giving the right message uh, and then approach by caution. Uh, all right, Brittany Tolly is asking, how, how big do you think my Sharpie, Pitbull, and Husky mix puppy will get? I'm getting his kennel, him cannot train for bedtime and I want to make sure he still has room to grow. So Sharpie, Pitbull and Husky. All right, so it would be, I would say, just go for a Husky. <laughs> I don't know which one is the dominant breed there, but just go with, with a Husky size dog. Uh, get the biggest kennel that you, will, you can get. Uh, and then use the divider to divide the kennel so it's not uh, huge for your puppy yet you know if you have a smaller puppy young dog uh, there's a divider they usually sell it with a uh, divider uh, mother was a pit bull and sharp mix so i would say yeah just just for safe side go with a husky uh, Huskies, they, they can get, you know, I would say, uh, I would say at least 30 inch, uh, 30, 35 inch, you know, standing up. So make sure you're getting a kennel or crate that is big enough to house a kennel when they are uh, big, uh, uh, fully uh, developed and grown up. Uh, so your puppy can stand up, but can't really turn around. You don't want them to, like, you know, you want them to turn around, but you don't want them to walk around the crate, you know. <laughs> you don't want them to walk around the crate like this. You want them to just to be able to turn around in a kennel. So uh, make sure that the divider is divided properly. So it's dividing your dog uh, space properly. And then as they grow up, uh, you just... Uh, increase the space uh, until they grow up. So I'll go with, uh, I would say, 35 inch tall and about 35 inch width. Something like that, I'm, that's my guess. Linda Green is going to be two years old in September. And, um, da, 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 da. all right, um, your beagle is gonna be two, okay. Uh, Brittany is asking, I want to get my puppy microchip. How do, how do you think he should be before I get him chipped? He is almost six weeks old. Uh, hmm, that's a good question. Uh, most, uh, I would say, you know, in uh, uh, most vets, they do it in different ages. Um, most of the vets in our play, in our uh, area, in our in our uh, part of uh, country, you know, Vancouver, BC, uh, they do it as soon as the dog turns, uh, you know, four months old or something like that. You can start. You can ask your vet. Uh, just go and check around with your with uh, three vets. Ask around. Ask three vets, and see which what they recommend. One may say. Uh, two weeks old, uh, 10 weeks old, one might say, you know, 14 weeks old, one might say, but wait until they're six weeks old, uh, six months old. Just figure out which one is more common and then, you know, go with that age. Uh, it doesn't matter, in, in general, it doesn't matter what age they are. You can chip, uh, uh, microchip them as, at any age. Um, da, da, da. Uh, Iris October says, thank you for your response. You are right. She loves to be praised and pet. There we go. Good, good. Thank you for confirming that. Uh, yes, most dogs, uh, this is very true, and I was going to talk about this tonight. Most dogs are either play motivated or praise rewarded. Uh, praise motivated. Play or praise or both. Uh, and um, in general, uh, you know, all dogs, humans included, animals, we are food motivated. It doesn't mean that food is going to help us to learn something. Uh, what makes us learn something is the passion and the love that we have for that subject. Here's an example. Uh, if, if I don't, I don't like, for example, if I don't like math, 
no matter what food you offer to me, I'm not being interested in, in math. I just hate math. Matter, it doesn't matter what kind of food you, foods you offer. You, be, you offer me Gordon Ramsay's dishes. I'll say, no, thanks. I, I'd rather eat this than do math, <laughs> right? So dogs are like that. Uh, they don't, it doesn't matter uh, what you offer them as a food. If they're not interested in learning, they're not going to learn that topic. Now, you can motivate them to learn something, and the only way ways that you can motivate a dog to learn something is by play or praise. These two are great motivators because dogs, most dogs love to be played, they love to play, they, they love to interact with you, or they love to be praised, they love to be told by you how good they are. So play and praise are the best motivators. Um, Jay is asking, I'm still trying to potty train my three months old puppy. He's definitely making progress. I'm wondering if I would see more progress if I brought him inside right after he did his business. So if you have a three months puppy and you're still puppy tra potty training, it means that you probably you're not doing something right. Here's my three tips when you're potty training your dog. Make sure that you take your puppy, um, no matter what age it is, puppy, every two hours outside, just take it outside. Put the jacket on or if you have to, uh, just take your dog outside. Let them do their business outside. Stay, stay outside for five minutes or so, let them get the right spot, get the right feeling, and let them do their business. If they don't do their business, bring them back home, uh, put them in a crate, or put them in a confined area, or leash them, or control them somehow, and then two hours later, take them out again. You do this for two days, for the eight hours, your dog is gonna be potty trained. They're going to learn, okay, I have to pee every two hours, uh, although I don't have to pee every two hours, but I'm going to manage to pee every two hours. After, once the puppy learn, becomes three months or four months old, their bladder starts growing as well, and it's, they're, they're capable of managing their bladder. They can hold longer than you, you, allow, you make them pee every two, three hours, four hours or ask them to let you know whenever they have to go. So what is the main problem? Let, let me know, uh, Jay, can you tell me what is the main problem that you think that you need, you need to bring him inside uh, after he does his business? Is he ping, still having accidents indoors? Let me know. Uh, and also Jay is asking, I'm a smoker, so sometimes it's a few minutes be between the time he goes potty and when we go inside. Yeah, you have to kind of manage and adjust your, not, you have to adjust with uh, your dog's uh, timing, not your timing. At least for the first two, uh, uh, first few weeks, you have to go with your dog's clock, not your time. So make sure that you're going with your dog's body uh, clock. Brittany Trolley is same mother, was a pit bull and Sharpie. Okay, I right, got that. And Karen uh, Sharma is saying thanks. Yes, he is such a cool dog and his name is Lucky. I got your point here, sir, and I think everything is going fine with my dog. Thank you very much for your valuable time. Thank you for being here and asking questions. Let me know if you have any other questions. Brittany is saying, thank you, I have three children. Wow, you must be busy uh, at home. And my husband, oh my goodness, you still have, a <laughs> you have three children, a husband and a dog as well, works out of state. How do I train my puppy to protect me and my kids while he's gone? Oh, wow. And I see that tough, Tundra 595 is in the house. Hi, Sarah, I actually made the stream. Sorry that I said I wouldn't make it. 
I thought I wouldn't make it. Glad that you're here, Tough Tundra. Thank you for being here, but you're here now. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for being here. And I'm gonna answer Brittany's question. This is a very good question, actually. Let me try to figure this out, how to answer it. So you have three kids, three, three kids, right? And a husband who works out of state and you want your dog to protect you. You want to train your dog puppy to protect, protect you uh, and your kids while your husband is away. The problem I have with this issue is, um, let me see, did you mention what type of dog it was? So it was a, uh, yes. Um, <laughs> tough Tundra, that's okay. You can come and go anytime, no problem. Um, da, 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 da. Let me see, uh, Brittany, I think you told me what it was, so, uh, da, da, da. Uh, okay, I'm going to answer this, anyway, Sharpie Pitbull and Husky Mix, yes, yes, that's the one, okay, so, you have a dog who could be a protection dog, but here's the problem, you can ask your dog to do one thing, and they will be good at one thing. You can't, they can't be good at two things. They can be only good at one thing. So what I mean by that is, they can all either be a protection dog or they can be a family dog. They can't be both, unfortunately. If you want to, them to be both, you have to be 24-7 training your dog, training your dog, and working your dog, and allowing your dog to be pet, and that only happens with police officers or army officers, because they are 24-7 in working mode. Those dogs are always in working mode, and their, their reward is is play. So here's an example. When you cross a border or when you go, um, you know, in in the airport, you you know, there are these dogs who search your luggage and your car and things like that. And if they find a, a scent of a drug or something like that, what they do is the dog gives the the officer the signal by sitting, and then as soon as they sit. The officer brings a toy and they play with the dog. So the reward of the dog is the play. So uh, what happens is the dog is always in that mode, in that mode that I'm searching. They say, you know, you can turn off that, uh, that, that drive, but if, if a dog has the drive to be a protection dog, you can't turn it off. It's always, it's always there. Uh, and, uh, and also, especially if you emphasize on it, you say, you know, you're going to work, you're going to do this, you're going to search, you're going to find drugs. If you emphasize on it and if you focus on it, they will be on all the time. So it is hard for me and, like, me and you, in a way, you know, average people, to have a dog who's protection, protecting and also it's a family dog because you, you're not providing 24-7 training for that dog. Unfortunately, it, it will confuse your dog if you ask it to protect you because then at the end of the day, you want your dog to be a family dog. You want to be safe around kids. You want, to be, you want it to be... Uh, you know, responsible and reliable around kids and family members. But if you allow your dog to be protection, protecting, protecting and be a protection dog, then your dog gets confused and takes that duty seriously and then focuses on that. So that's one thing. And the other thing is you have to see if your dog uh, has the drive to be a protection dog. Uh, more like you know, um, my Harvey, for example, Beagle, Beagle, right? 
don't, most people. He is not sent dog at all. He like you know he doesn't find. He doesn't focus on where is the scent coming from and follow that scent. Whereas him was a scent dog. He would find a scent and follow it and would be gone for five, ten minutes and then come back. But him, nothing. The drive is not in him, but he had the drive. So every dog is different. You, and most of the dogs who are in, in, the, in, in, due, in the protection uh, job, um, they are selected. Those officers, the police departments, and uh, you know uh, the the army, they start looking for the dogs who have the drive to protect or do attacks or um, search or do this and do that. They search uh, from when they are puppy, and they find out if this dog has the drive to be such and such. And then, if the, they know, uh, they see. Even this happens in um, um, in uh, guide dogs. Uh, they, they those people they see if the dog can be uh, usable for being a guide dog. If the dog doesn't have the drive to be a guide dog or protection dog or to be scent dog or this or dog that dog or that dog from the puppy. They give it up. They don't use that dog. Uh, and if they see that that puppy has that drive, then they emphasize on it and they focus on it and they train, train and, and train and train. And sometimes also, what happens? Uh, you know, six months later, even a year later, they notice. Okay, we're doing all this training and this. For example, this guide dog or this dog who was supposed to be a protection dog. No, it's not having any clues about what they're it's supposed to be. They give it up. So it all depends on your dog, what you want to do, and how you want to do it. So it's not that easy. So I'm glad you asked that question because it's a very interesting question. And I have uh, many clients who have come to me and asked me and I wanted to do the same thing. They wanted to have a family dog and also protection dog. Uh, which is kind of not possible. Dogs are good at doing one thing. So that protection dog, for example, is good at protecting. That dog who's working at the border searching for drugs is good at that search, searching. Uh, it's not good at pre protection. It's good at searching. And, it, and, it's, and it's a family dog too. It goes home with a family member. But the thing is that that family member is keeping that dog at work and only when they're not working says okay time to relax and the dog relaxes but it's still in that zone it relaxes but it's still that zone they're always aware of it thank you for that question i hope that made sense Brittany. and tough uh, tundra 595 is it's gone again, came and went, uh, and you deserve a diamond play button. Oh, thank you very much, Tough Dandra Button 595. You know what diamond play button is, what it means, uh, diamond play button? YouTube gives di these buttons uh, when, when a YouTube channel reaches, I think, 100,000, something like that. Uh, and then they give gold when they are a million subscribers. So I, that's what it means. I, Tough Tundra 595 is wishing me I had uh, 100,000 subscribers. I'm going to get there soon. With your help, I will get there. Please share my channel. Please subscribe to my channel. Please let everybody know about this channel. Let's get this channel to that. Um, number that would be really great and i really appreciate appreciate your effort as well that you put i am very excited about the growth of this channel i'm really enjoying and i uh, i love teaching and uh, sharing time with you guys and i love uh, getting the results that i'm getting also the feedback that i'm getting is very positive and very uh, appreciative thank you very much 
So uh, then, um, Jay is saying, I take him out every two hours at most. It seems like he doesn't realize he's not supposed to go in the house. I know he can hold it, but he just let it out inside uh, if he has to the urge. And I know about dogs going potty when they are stressed and given too much freedom, but I don't give him much freedom, just the room I mean at the time. Okay, so you're not giving too much freedom and it's going um, more often than two hours. Um, here's some solutions. Take, take it out every 90 minutes. Maybe that's the perfect timing for your dog. Every dog is individual, is different. So maybe take your dog, your puppy, every 90 minutes. See what timing works better for your dog. Bella, come on, come on, come on Bella. Um, first of all, second of all, uh, I'm sure you're feeding kibble. I'm guessing also, but I'm sure that you're feeding kibble. When you feed a dog kibble, they tend to be honest with you, they tend to poop and pee a lot more. The reason for that is the kibble, because it's dry food, it forces them to drink, um, drink a lot more, more water, more often. So once they drink a lot more water, unfortunately they have to pee more. And because kibble is very cons con condensed food, and very fibrous, they, it makes them to poop often as well. So the best solution, to be honest with you, the best solution is to feed your dog raw diet. Feed, change the diet and you'll see your dog is going to drink less, it's going to have less accidents, uh, it's going to poop less, it's going to be healthier, it's going to be better. So that's unfortunately the solution. And this applies to all dogs, you know, all puppies. If you feed your dog um, proper diet, they will, uh, they will, um, you know, you have less accidents. They will be uh, more in tune with their internal system. They can tune it out better, and it's healthier for them. Uh, and it's just very good. Uh, I would highly suggest you to start feeding your dog or your puppy um, raw diet, which is very good. So, um, is there any other questions that uh, you need me to answer? If not, uh, I'm going to answer one more question that I have received from my, one of my viewers. Uh, let me see. Okay. Good girl, Bella. Bella is over here. I have some dogs here. I have a table here. Bella is very sensitive to what heights I can, and I have some stuff here and I can't put Bella up here. Otherwise, I would have put them up here so for you to see. Uh, but let me answer one more question. Uh, Brittany says, thank you. you. Yes, it did. So I'm hope that I think my my answer and uh, my answer my answer answered your question. Very good. Uh, one more question that I have, uh, and I was just talking about it a little bit: dog breeds and behavior. Uh, in in general, uh, let me. I'm going to finish up tonight's uh, broadcast with this. Whatever breed of dog that you have. It doesn't matter what breed of dog that you have. Consider your dog a pet, a family member. It doesn't matter what kind of dog or breed it is. Your dog is a family member who wants to be with you, who wants to please you, who wants to live with you. It's a retired uh, working dog. Every breed of dog is a retired working dog. Unless you want your dog to work, do some task, do something for you, other than that, it's a pet, it's a family member. Treat your dog as a family member, let them know that they are a family member, and don't ask them to work for you if you don't want them to work for you. What I mean by that is, 
don't force them to work. If you force them to work, they will start acting as they are working and you, they will drive you crazy. They will develop behavioral issues, uh, it will cause them to become stressed uh, because you are encouraging them to work. So for example, if you have a border collie, your border collie it, it originally was designed to hurt animals, uh, farm animals, right? domesticated animals. Although it's a domesticated animal itself. Don't let your border collie, for example, to start acting like herding dogs and humans and start, um, don't take it to somewhere or don't play with a ball that encourages your border collie to behave like a border collie. Encourage your dog to behave like a pet. Just, you know, do normal doggy stuff. Don't encourage your dog to be a breed. Encourage your dog to be a family member. Encourage your dog to be a pet. That's what I mean. Hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you next time. And remember, if you want to become an educated dog lover and have a well-behaved, healthy, and happy dog, just like my beagles, Unfortunately, I lost John of the Beagle last year. He was uh, 16 years old, passed away. If you want to have a well-behaved, healthy, and happy dog, consider subscribing to my channel and let everybody in your community also know about this channel. Uh, encourage them to si uh, subscri subscribe to my channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell icon as well so you will get not notified as soon as I post my next video or if I go live. I'm going to plan to go live every month. I will let you know ahead of time when I go uh, live. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, leave those questions in the comments area on this video or any of my uh, coming up videos. And I'll, I will read them all the time and I'll, I uh, answer them as well. Sangeeta, thank you very much for being here. Jay, thank you for being here. Thank you, uh, Brittany, thank you for being here. Tough Tundra, thank you for being here. Karen Sharma, thank you for being here. And Linda, Brittany, Karen, I only, I think so, I said. Uh, thank you all for being here. I went through the names. And I will see you next time. And until next time, have fun with your dog.